Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make this video right here uh, for all Tupac Shakur fans, people who love his music, his words. I want to do this for his father, his brothers and sisters. And um, let's get into some of this straight game. Life is like those cards. It's not what you dealt with, but how you play it. Remember they used to laugh at a brother Welcome back ladies and gentlemen Thank you for tuning in I appreciate your time Hit the thumbs up button Subscribe to the channel if you have not already And like I always say If you want to be one of the first people notified When I drop some of this straight game Please do me a favor And click on what appears to be that little bell notification Right below this video I'm going to get right into it Ladies and gentlemen Recently um, I've been under attack Uh by uh, Gullible John and uh, Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. And um, they've been trying to silence these truthful videos, these truthful transformative uh, videos, very informative videos um, that I've been making, um, pointing out uh, the lies that they've been telling involving Tupac Shakur and uh, various other subjects, but namely Tupac Shakur and his association with Death Row and so on and so forth. But what I found, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you something that's so hypocritical, you're going to be like, wow. And it's going to show you that they're just playing these games. Also, YouTube needs to pay attention to what I'm about to do. So they've been basically copyright claiming my videos, saying that I've been using their stuff, um, which is transformative and covered under the use, I mean, under the uh, doctrine of fair use, if you will, right? as criticism um, and it being transformative and how I'm, I'm going I'm to do this. Okay, this video right here. This video right here. Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. and Gullible John actually used uh, an excerpt from my uh, interview with Billy Garland in this video. Right? It's not transformative. It's identical to what I basically did me and the audit dialogue did and they chose to use my my intellectual property that I own right look and TPD's book he actually tried to come up with a plausible defense really in regards to saying that when they pulled up on the car Tupac allegedly tried to reach I uh, heard that well, full gun he right would leave it on that night. They didn't bring no pieces. And they told all the bodyguards to leave their pieces, which they never did before. Reggie Wright did that. Who really technically wasn't involved in security for Tupac. Tupac had fired prior. We got proof for that. We got papers and the documented uh, information that he was fired right away security from Tupac's detail. So why was he involved in Tupac's? security at night and they tell me that this boy reggie is never away from shoot night then when you saw a shoot night you saw reggie so why wasn't reggie with shoot night so that was billy garland from the full length interview i guess they didn't want to put that in a segment but wanted to throw it in the full length so my voice all of that mr garland's voice all of that now they've been basically copyright claiming me for doing similar or somewhat of the same thing. The difference is, is that Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. offered no new evidence or information in regards to what Mr. Garland had said. So it's basically using that and then trying to say, well, he's gonna speak on it. He's, he never spoke on it. He never offered anything new from that perspective, if you will, right? But there's another piece in this video that I want you to pay attention to. And this one right here is so important that I really don't think people have been understanding what I've been trying to say. You're going to hear Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. say that he was not, was not never removed from, uh, he was never fired by Tupac, and you've never heard nobody say that other than people on YouTube. Well, 
if Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. is considered to be someone on YouTube, right? Then he said it himself. I want you to listen to him say that he never been fired and only people say it's on YouTube. And then I'm going to show you the video and where he said that he was fired himself. Listen. I, like I always said, was never relieved of duty from Tupac security. Nobody says that, but people on YouTube that had nothing to do with Tupac life ever in life. From his daddy on. You heard that. Did you see the look in his eye? Right? Look in his eye. Why would someone lie about something like that when they have already admitted it? I'm going to show you now where he admits that he was fired by Tupac via facts. And this is the facts. So he's also lying about the information that has been produced in regards to him being fired. But now, once again, he himself had admitted that he was fired with this very facts that I'm showing you. Listen. We're a big psych and somebody like the chip was like, Reg, where's, where's, where's Park security at, man? Where's the security? I'm like, that nigga sent me a letter over the day faxing me, fire me. I don't play no games. That nigga don't want no security on him. Cool. That's less of a headache than me trying to find somebody to work. And Shug looked at me and Shug was like, we was right there in the middle of the club at Austin Blue. So Reggie, don't play like that, man. Don't play like that. Park, Park, uh, Park, number one, he don't pay you no way. He ain't hired you no way. That's, I hired you. I paid him. Don't, 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 don't play like that. So Boom. Do you understand what has been going on? Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. and Gullible John have been lying to everyone. And the fact of the matter is, is the reason why Reggie does not want anyone to know for a fact in which he admitted himself that he was fired. And that's why he, because he needs to believe that because he knows that he was complicit in the death of Tupac Shakur. Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. ran to the grand jury when it was time to, uh, uh, they, they, they um, convened the grand jury involving KPD. Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. ran to the uh, grand jury to alleviate himself of the guilt and the responsibility that he played in the death of Tupac Shakur. He's also said it, he was one of the reasons why Keefe D didn't get bail because he was working with the DA in Las Vegas from that perspective, right? Now, I want you to understand something. In running to the DA, when they convened the grand jury against Keefe D, the only thing that Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. was trying to do was alleviate himself of the guilt and trying to now say he's helping with the arrest or the apprehension or um, involved in some way helping to convict KPD in the murder of Tupac Shakur. When in fact, Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. knows that if it were not for him pulling the security off of Tupac, in which his own security officers said, Frank Alexander and Michael Moore said that Reggie was trying to, to he told him not to carry guns, and Michael Moore said where, in fact, Reggie said that he had to be down at Club 662. And Frank was the only one on Tupac that night because Tupac had told Frank after he fired Reggie from his personal security detail in which this right here, this letter shows that Frank, yo, you going with me in some new security situation apparatus that Tupac was probably going to set up, right? So now... Understand, that's the reason why Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. wants everybody to believe that he had something to do with Keefe D not making bail, right? And Keefe D being arrested. When in fact, that is the furthest thing from the truth. It was Keefe D's own statements that they're basically relying on and the statements and the uh, proffer agreement and the other interviews that Keefe D had done with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department as well as the uh, LAPD and the FBI. 
that they're using as their number one tools of evidence. It had nothing to do with Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. But what he wants us to believe is that. I want you to understand very, very, very seriously. Someone who would say that no one has ever said that I was never removed from Tupac security detail. We know 100% beyond any shadow of a doubt that that is a lie because the person who said that they were never removed is the person who admitted to being removed via fax. And here is the information from which that comes. Once again, listen, you have to understand when Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. admitted in the video that he was fired via fax, the fax was not released yet. The fax had not been released, right? So what he tried to do was then walk that back and was like, well, yeah, you know, he sent me over a fax, firing me, and so on and so on, and acted as if Tupac, and he tried to make it seem like it was um, in and around April sometime, or June sometime of 1996. Listen to me. He tried to change the time in which he said that he received the facts. We went to this party. It was the night of the draft on the 1996 draft date. Keyshawn party had Keyshawn Johnson had a draft party at the uh, House of Blues, and when it in fact was August 27, 1996, approximately uh, 11 to 13 days prior to Tupac being shot. get it I needed to I need for you to understand this because Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. has been walking around acting like he has been some kind of hero to this situation and he's not that guy in fact I will say it once again Suge Knight said out of his mouth where he told Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. to bring to send five more security guards on that night in Vegas and Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. refused to do so. This is a fact from Suge Knight himself. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking Pac. Yeah. They were watching him. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to him. Yeah. And that's why, um, like I said, I had two of the toughest guys for him. And Reggie pulled him off of me. It didn't have to happen. I told him to send five guys from the club to there, and they never said nobody. The reason why I keep um, hammering this point is to show you that Reggie, the Rat Wright Jr., has been trying to obfuscate. He's been trying to manipulate. He's been trying to play Jedi mind tricks with the people. And once again, you see it here factually. Not nothing I created out. Uh, thin air, not nothing I said out of my mouth from me. I want you to believe what I'm saying. He said it out of his mouth. He was never removed. Then he admitted to it. He tried to change the date in which the facts came. It was not until Yasmin Fula uh, released this facts because Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. had been talking greasy about her son, may he rest in peace, and his mom. And if anybody does not know who Yasmin Fula is, it is the mother of Yaki Gaddafi. He was also in Vegas that night, in which Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. took Yaki Gaddafi down to the police station to give a statement without his mother's permission at that time, and he was wrong. And when told about that, Reggie started talking crazy about that woman, who was a former Black Panther, who was a pillar of her community, I need you to understand how important this is. Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. is a liar. He's conniving. They've been trying to take my videos down off the internet because they exemplify nothing but the cold, hard, factual truth with documentation to back it up. Like I said, you can support whoever you want. I'm not tripping on that. I don't care about whether you support a straight game TV or me as an individual, I come to bring you this straight game, uncut, unfiltered, raw, and in effect with documentation. It's just that simple. So now, when you understand what has happened, you'll understand that 
if it were not for Reggie the Rat Wright Jr., Keefe D wouldn't have been able to get to close as Tupac. Tupac wouldn't have been able to run over to Orlando to do anything if he was properly secured. That is a fact beyond any shadow of a doubt. Security is your first line of defense, not only against perpetrators, but also against yourself. There would have been a protocol after the situation, even let's say, even if the situation would have happened and they would have, there should have been a protocol and saying, hey, you know what? This is how we're going to roll. Pop, you're going to need your vest and so on and so forth. But the cold fact about it is this. Listen, Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. ran to the grand jury, right? But guess what? He wasn't even there. He wasn't even there to offer up anything. And in fact, he lied about being at the hospital with Shug and being in Shug's hospital room shortly after the situation. And Shug confirmed that Reggie was lying and he was not there. And he didn't talk to Shug until he got out of the hospital. Shug Knight said that. You understand what I'm saying? So Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. has lied so much, so much, calling people gay he's never met, calling people names he does not know, and, and all to uh to 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 uh, sidetrack or should I say divert your attention from the facts of the matter, and the facts of the matter lie within this video. So when you look at Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. and Gullible John putting all of this information out there, using all of these slanderous, derogatory, defamatory terms against people, right? You have to understand why they're doing that. They're doing that to try to divert your attention away from the truth. And the truth of the matter is, Reggie Wright Jr. was complicit in the death of Tupac Shakur by number one, through negligence, by number two, sabotaging his security, by number three, disobeying a direct order from his boss to send more security to protect Tupac Shakur on September 7th, 1996. You heard him say, nobody ever, I was never removed from Tupac's security. But then in the video, before the uh, facts actually came out, proving that Tupac had sent the facts in which Reg Reggie confessed to in the video, right? No one had seen the facts. And then he said, yeah, that nigga sent me over facts today, firing me, right? That means you were removed. It's that simple. Now, whether Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. still worked for death row was another thing. That's something different from you saying you never were removed as Tupac security. You work for security as death row. So when Shield Knight told Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. to basically uh, send um, security, five more security guards, Reggie the Rat Wright Jr. was supposed to do so, but he disobeyed a direct order. So on one end, he wants, I was never removed. Oh, you were. Here's the facts proving it. On another end, he would say, well, I still work for death row, but you still disobeyed the direct order from Shield Knight on that night. And what Suge Knight said out of his own mouth. You get it? There's a two-pronged way where he's wrong. Number one, he lied about not being removed. He admitted it. You heard it. Then, when given a direct order from Suge Knight, he disobeyed the direct order. Not only that, but was working behind the scenes, as you've seen him do with removing my videos, right? He was working behind the scenes to remove security and pull security off of Tupac and Michael Moore. And that's why Frank Alexander was the only one on Tupac that night. Reggie had set the stage for Tupac to be harmed. He did not do his job. And for that, he's liable, he's negligent, and he's responsible for that part that he played in the death of Tupac Shakur. He can't run from that. We can't let him run from that. He is responsible for that. This is why they're trying to remove my videos. 
And I had to bring this to you so that you could see the hypocrisy. One minute they want to use my intellectual property right, right? I didn't copyright claim them at that particular time, right? I didn't even know about it. I didn't even know about it until recently. That's why I'm making this video. I hope you understand what it is that I conveyed here. Download this video and save it. Your boy Delray, straight down.